everybody. Uh, Sage Hayes here, um, Portland, Maine, Hive Live. Welcome back. We're going to um, see if we can build a little audience. Oh, great. There we go. We're getting the information that we need. Um, I'm here today with Ann Helfrich, licensed acupuncturist. Hi. And today what we're going to be talking about is? I guess uh, the way I practice acupuncture and the way that I live in the world and social justice. Eh, something like that. Yeah, totally, <laughs> exactly. So, um, welcome back, y'all. It's been a, you guys. It's been a tremendous first week with Hive Live. Um, we're launching the Hive Directory, which is a, a online directory for um, all different types of healing practitioners. Um, I'm gonna have a little bit more information coming out about that. But so far, we've done five interviews, and with um, everything from a um, who do I like a coach. We interviewed Jacoby in Massachusetts, who is a yoga teacher trainer. Mm -hmm. We started with an herbalist. Mm -hmm. We interviewed a professor of social work in Albany. So five interviews, we've had over 5,000 views. So thank you, Hive Live, Global Hive Live, for tuning in. And um, this is interview number six. Um, Anne is a good friend of mine, a colleague who I respect very much. And um, got her training at a place that is really exciting and I hope that she t uh, talks about. Mm -hmm. One thing I've often done the beginning of interviews is just ask about pronouns. Um, oh, I don't have a preferred pronoun. Most people use she and I don't. You don't have a preferred pronoun? I don't care either way. That's yeah. awesome. Me too. <laughs> yeah. That's probably why we're such good friends. Yeah, totally. <laughs> well, one of the reasons. I'm like, I don't really care. <laughs> I go by I. I, uh, nice. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Cool. So we're in Anne's office. I also want to tell you that we have Anne's dog here with oh, Sadie. us. Sadie. Sadie, who um, will give you a, sh a little, sh if I do it right now, I'm afraid I'll knock the tripod over, so, but we'll give you a shot of Sadie in a little bit. Sadie is a part of all Anne's treatments, which is really yeah. cool. She sits in here and breathes with people. I, I started bringing her like a couple summers ago because where we were living, I couldn't leave her for the day, and then when I started leaving her home again, everybody said, where's Sadie? And so, <laughs> so she just lays under the table and snores and like processes things for people. So she does the good work. She's my coworker. <laughs> That's yeah. awesome. I'm like, we gotta go to work. Yeah. <laughs> Sadie's like, no problem. Yeah, so we'll give you girl. a shot of Sadie in a Big little dog. bit. Um, so first thing we want to start with is just give us a little snapshot of your life. Who are you? And Tell us so, a little bit about yourself. I'm Ann Helfridge. I grew up in New Jersey, currently live in South Portland, Maine. Went to an alternative school when I was a kid that really created a lot of the foundation for my education about being like learning how to think and being a critical thinker more than memorizing things. And then went to public high school and learned about, it was a largely minority high school, so I learned a lot about white privilege there, actually. And then dropped out of high school and went to College of the Atlantic, which was also a very alternative kind of place for learning. So that's what brought me to Maine. And then I left Maine and lived in DC for 10 years um, in various roles. That's where I went to acupuncture school, just outside of Baltimore. And then at Thai Sophia Institute, which is now the Maryland University of Integrative Health. And learned amazing work got some amazing gifts there so um and now i live in south portland moved to back to maine in 2010 and i'm practicing here in portland and love my work really mm. love it yeah so feel lucky that's amazing um so many people i'm talking to love their work so you've been practicing for as a, in a private practice for six years then yeah. here mm -hmm. yeah. yeah congratulations thanks yeah, it's a big yeah. deal. It takes work. Yeah. <laughs> it takes a lot yeah. of work. Yeah. Yeah. But it's good. Yeah. Make it work. Totally. Make it work. Yeah. yeah. We're going to be talking more about that in the hive Which later. Which is why healthcare is very important. I want to put in a plug for the ACA yep. right now because as a sole proprietor, the only way that I can afford healthcare is through Obamacare right now. So, you know, sole proprietors, you go to a massage therapist who works for themselves, a therapist who works for themselves, an acupuncturist who works for themselves, anybody who's not a part of a big corporate thing, you know, they own their own business. It is really difficult to get health care without, without this bill. So that's... Uh, oh, Thank okay. you. Yeah. I, I agree. <laughs> I, I also, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. yeah, for sure. Yeah. I really appreciate that plug. So um, why don't we just start, we're going to get a little bit deeper into it. Why don't we just start 
in, you know, to somebody who doesn't know anything about acupuncture, yeah. um, well, why don't we just start there? Like, how would you, how would you describe it? What is acupuncture? Okay, what is acupuncture? So, on the most basic level, acupuncture is the insertion of very thin needles into the skin to affect what we call the chi. Um, chi, the best translation for chi into Western, a Western word is energy, and when we say energy, we mean like what physicists mean with energy, mm -hmm. like how this table is made of energy, and the this coaster is made of energy, and rocks and trees and everything has some different form of mass of energy. Mm -hmm. So that's also, that's chi. This table has chi, has a certain kind. Mm -hmm. You and I have a certain kind. Our bodies, each organ in our body, every part of our body has a different kind of chi. Mm. And so we can use needles to open pathways and influence the way that chi is flowing, hmm. thanks to thousands and thousands of years of clinical research, experiential, uh, what's that word called when you have something with an E? Um, epistem? I don't know. It's like... Is People who were really, I don't know, maybe. Maybe, yeah. yeah. I'm sure somebody out there knows. <laughs> maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there's a... Uh, documented research. Well, uh, documentation... Efficacy. Yeah. Documentation is... A lot of the documentation actually was destroyed in the 50s by Mao because of the way... So there were many lineages of acupuncture that came down through thousands and thousands of years through fa different families, and um, a lot of that was burnt and destroyed and so then there are different lineages of acupuncture that are practiced here in the US and so the lineage that I'm taught under that I'm taught um, that I was taught and I work with most is five element acupuncture which comes through from Taiwan actually so a man named J.R. Worsley went to Taiwan and studied acupuncture and he learned five element acupuncture and then he brought that to um, England first and then to the US about 30 years ago and well now longer I guess <laughs> now more than 30 years ago but um can we and if we just pause there for a second yeah. I think such a th this is a modality that's thousands of years old that was passed down through families and through you know different w ways that in the West we almost you know are unimaginable right um, and so now we're practicing it in the West and like, um, one question I have is, as an acupuncture here in Maine, um, acupuncturist, mm -hmm. um, and through your training, like, h how did they, what's, in a, you know, again, in the simplest way, how did your school teach you as a Westerner yeah. to orient to something, to a paradigm and a, and a lineage and wisdom that yeah. is may, perhaps not your own yeah. and from That's a different a culture? Question. That's a really good question. So, at, through the... The founders of Thai Sophia were Bob Duggan and Diane Connolly, and they're amazing, amazing teachers, great teachers for me and for many, many people. And they actually are no longer at the main university of integrative health. Um, and that's a whole thing that I'm going to leave where it is. But um, they had a great focus. Their focus at Thai Sophia, we didn't hold a needle for the first year of practice. How many years is the training? It's a master's program. It's about three, three and a half years of classes plus clinic. So maybe three years of classes plus clinic. So I think I finished in about three and a half years. Yeah, solid. Yeah, yeah. So the first year was no, it was, um, the focus was really on word as needle. Hmm. So, what, is that, what does that mean? So um, that means that, and the way that I practice is that, the, <laughs> this is a very big question, um, the most important part of my practice is not necessarily that I insert a needle and make your back pain go away. The most important part of my practice is that I teach you how to observe your symptoms mm. so that you become the master of your own body, mm. so that you realize that you're the expert on your body, I'm not an expert. I'm a guide. I can be a guide. I can teach you how to how to figure out what your body's saying to you. Bob would always say, "Your your body is wise, and your symptoms are your teachers." Mm. 
So we use that, right? I use that to say, what is this symptom telling you? What does it feel like in your body right at that moment when the headache starts? Mm -hmm. And then... Right when it starts. Right when a symptom starts. Yes, so this so is really applicable for anybody out there. Yes. Absolutely, has this a symptom, is applicable for, right, for what, the entire world. For the entire world. <laughs> like, right as a symptom starts is to catch it and you, right. and you ask. And then go, what happened but right before that? Okay. And then what happened right before that? Uh-huh. And usually it's breathing changes, frankly, to give you a little spoiler alert. It's usually your breathing changes first. Before a headache starts, oh, something happened and your breathing changed. Huh. But what... Something happened and then your breathing changed. Right. And so can you get it down to... Noticing when the breathing changes mm -hmm. so that before mm -hmm. the so the breathing changes and then the shoulders come up This is just an example with headaches, right? And, right? and there's a lot of more symptoms that are very complicated and a lot harder to get to the bottom of and some headaches are really hard to get to the bottom of so this isn't about um, You know Victim blaming do you know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. this isn't about saying like oh you have all the keys to get to the bottom of your symptoms and if you don't then you're broken and you're not good at it. Mm -hmm. It's not that. Mm -hmm. And maybe we have the keys to get to the bottom of all our of our symptoms if we can if we can learn how to do it. Maybe. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I haven't gotten to the bottom of all of mine. Mm -hmm. You know? Mm -hmm. But I get better and better at it. Right. And this is offering some very um real and specific tools and some very old tools to be able to build capacity to be able to do that. Right, and that's the thing that, to get you back to your first question, mm -hmm. or your question is, Bob and Diane really focused on teaching us ancient wisdom practices mm -hmm. and how to be in the world and be at peace with what is going on, however it is, to see the world as perfect as it is. Mm. If it could be otherwise, it would be. Mm. Which is an interesting thing to intersect with social justice, right? But Bob would say, you can love someone as perfect as they are and never, never want to see them again. <laughs> <laughs> never let them be in your life right. again. Right. Right? And you can accept them as perfect as they are. Oh, that's the train going by. We have trains here. <laughs> Out back. <laughs> yeah. So. Beautiful. Right. And the train is perfect as it is, right? And right. so we are. So, um. So a lot of our training really focused on noticing our own squawks. Note, we call a squawk like upset, right? Recognizing when, recognizing that the upset is optional, re recognizing that in the, so therefore in the face of any upset, we can take effective action or let it go, right? Those are the options, take effective action or let it go, or give yourself a headache. I'm sorry I'm down on headaches. I don't mean if you have headaches that you're... Right, it's an example. Yeah, yeah just an example. Or right. give yourself... Or there are many symptoms that, that come from stress, right? We recognize that stress increases every symptom. Stress does not decrease any s symptom. No symptom is alleviated by stress, right? So yeah. additional stress on our systems aggravates all symptoms. Yes, right. And it sounds like, again, like part of the... I mean, it's, it's amazing your first year, that's what you focused on. Right. It's just like almost like the framework and the paradigm to be able to build your lens as a practitioner to be able to educate and help people start to slow down how we see symptoms. Right. And how we yeah. understand them. Right. Exactly. Right. So that maybe we have some agency, maybe we have some more choice. Right. And maybe we have some more, a little bit of time when that first shift happens. Right to work with it. Now, right, in this right. world, sometimes that's that's just irrelevant because shit's moving and life's happening and it's, you know, it, it, it takes a lot of capacity to be able to do that right. and, you know, but... Right, and so that's when we say practice. Okay. Okay, so that's when we'd say, you know, uh, anybody, anytime we teach someone about slowing, slowing down, it's all about slowing down that process, okay? So... Okay, the headache happened. Every time I tell somebody to go look for a symptom, I send them away. We go through it. We break it down here first. We break it down. What's the phenomena? Not the story about it. Not what... Right, so my shoulder hurts. Right, okay. So when did the... Uh, shoulder is a harder one to do. Okay, sorry. Uh, <laughs> maybe I can do it with shoulder. So your shoulder hurts. Does your shoulder really hurt? 
No. Okay, we have to do something real. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see. I'm actually right, feeling pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> um, I just... Okay, wait. Let me <laughs> I'm sleeping good. I'm eating well. Look at this cute. They're, so they're laughing with us. <laughs> I know, it's totally cute. Oh, oh. Hi, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I know, it's totally weird. Yeah, that's fine. And awesome. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, okay, wait. So, let me just see if I can come up. And So, I send someone home. First, we break it down. What's the phenomena? Um... I got mad. That's a good one. Have oh. you been mad lately? <laughs> we don't have to get into content. <laughs> content doesn't Yes, matter. I have been mad lately. Okay, so did you get, um, did it serve you? Oh, that's a good question. Because sometimes mad serves. Sometimes anger serves. So if it's not, so if it's serving, then do it. Right. I mean, Bob would say, do it. It's okay to be angry. Just don't do it around any other living beings. Okay. That's what Bob would say. Yeah, that's a good piece uh, of wisdom. I have a... As a, as someone raised female in this society, um, I have a different relationship with that because I think when I was going through my healing process, through one of my major healing processes about trauma, about um, childhood sexual trauma, anger was really important for me. Mm -hmm. So I had been pushing down my anger mm -hmm. for many, many years thinking, oh, I'm not angry, that doesn't make me angry, I wasn't angry, right? Mm -hmm. um, right, so like that, has, that had a, a very important place. Right, so learning how to access that anger mm -hmm. and express that anger was life-changing. So it's not, so I want to be clear when we say take effective action or let it go, mm -hmm. that is not the same as pushing it down into a bottle and pretending it doesn't exist. Right. Letting it go does not mean that. Right. 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 Letting it go does not mean pretending it doesn't exist. Letting it go means, like, I have processed it, and now I can let it go, and I can breathe more deeply. Right. Like, that would be how you partially would know that you let it go. Right. Right. Like, right. you feel more free. Right. You rather feel than more, free. Right. More, com com more compressed. Right. So, I don't know if... I, in many cases, I can accept that don't be angry around other people thing. In some cases, I think, well, it's good to have a witness. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, it is good to have you know, a witness. Uh, now, does that mean being angry at somebody in the road, you know, who, like a, you know, passerby, innocent passerby, or somebody in line behind you? No. Right, but it might mean you that you notice that, that something's coming up, and it's an right. opportunity to be like, oh, I got some anger down here because I'm, you know... Right, and so you go, so then you notice, right, what's the phenomena of anger in your body? That's the question. Getting back to, you've been angry lately, what's the phenomena? Can you tell me what it felt like in your body? Yeah. Being angry, the last time it happened. Um, well, it feels like heat. Good, yeah. And probably like some tightness in my chest. Good, that's good description. So I want to be, for, for people who don't, who aren't, as practiced at this kind of observation as sage, oftentimes you do not know what that question means. Oftentimes yeah. I have people sit in that chair and they're like, what are you talking about? Right, like what is it? What, what does it, it feel like in, in my, my body? body? Right. I'm not in my body. Right, right. That's the main, you know, I get that answer a lot. I wasn't there. Right. Which, right? Is, a, which is actually a good strategy. Very good, right? So then I say, okay, let's try and remember. Think about it as best you can. Give me one thing, one thing. You've got heat and tightness in your chest. What else have you got? Well, then there's shortness of breath. Shortness of breath. Good. Breathing. See, breathing always comes in. And then, what else you got? Anything up here? Well, the heat comes up here. Yeah. How about your heart? Heart is sore. Sore? Oh, that's a nice description. Yeah, yeah. I would say it's sore. I yeah. mean, the political situation, my heart is very sore. And it, there's a lot of, like, anger, sadness I'm going in between. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yep. Yep. Okay. So... When you, so can you tell me, so you have, usually I write this stuff down, you have heat, you have tightness in the chest, you have a sore heart, you have, but I kind of pulled that out of you, so we're going to leave it out. What was the, oh, breathing, constricted breathing. Okay, shortness of breath. So can you tell me what, the something happened that made you angry, 
<laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah. And then what happened first? What was the first thing? Heat, uh, constriction, of, or shortness of breath, or... Oh, uh, that's a hard question. I'm not sure what happened first. Okay. So that would be your homework. Okay. To go and then if I figured week. out what happened first, what would you have me do with it? Right. So then you come home. So then the homework is watch for that. Okay. Just watch for that, that change. Watch for the raising in the heat. Let's okay. say heat was first. Yeah. Watch for that change of raising into heat. Okay. Say you're coming into me as somebody who struggles with anger. You take your anger out on people in your life and you don't want to. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So then this is when we'd have this conversation. Okay. Yeah. So then the first week up is just watch for it. Just notice. Just, just watch for it. Notice. Not try to do anything about it. Right. Because, and then tell me what else you can tell me. Okay. So that's like a week's worth of practice and hopefully you're, hopefully you're going to get angry over the course of the week. Sometimes people come back and they're not angry that week and I'm like, Ugh. well, it's a blessing and a curse. But, um, <laughs> so the the key to observing it is watching it without shame or judgment mm -hmm. right without the the thought i'm doing this wrong i didn't even i i should have i should be changing my behavior right now none of that because that makes it harder to watch that's what takes you out of your body mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so this is the process of slowing it down this is how i teach people how to slow it down mm -hmm. so that and I mean, in, in two weeks, you might be able to go, well, we'll jump ahead. But the goal would be that, that at some point you get to the point where you go, I noticed it as soon as the heat rose. Mm -hmm. I took a deep breath. Mm, like you countered it. Right. Like I noticed it. Oh, this is me getting angry. Mm -hmm. Getting angry. This is me going, this is that phenomena. Mm -hmm. And I'm about to yell at somebody mm -hmm. and Un I, unconsciously likely right like because I'm just because usually you know usually that happens like zero to 60 right but if we really learn how to observe that happening in our body then you go like oh there you can notice the first thing because maybe there's something that happens even before the heat right. which if you spend the week really paying attention to that yeah then you can go oh but you know what before the heat I feel a tightness in my stomach sure and then you start that, there. and then you watch for the tightness in the stomach, and when the tightness in the stomach has, I call that your red flag symptom. So that's when you go ding, 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 and said, pay attention. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. take a deep breath. Mm -hmm. And that's how you learn how to slow it down, and that's how you learn how to not get a headache. Right, and un what you're saying is, is about, ch is about agency, choice, paying attention, and really potentially having the tools to fundamentally change a pattern that's not serving me. That's right. That's the key. Right. Is change a pattern that's not serving. Right. Because, and then if you notice the heat rise and the anger is something that needs to be expressed that will serve you, mm -hmm. you know, without anger, we wouldn't have had the silver, civil rights movement. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah, without anger, we wouldn't have had a lot of movements. Right. Yeah. Anger has, anger is action. Mm -hmm. It's springtime energy. It goes like, boom, up mm -hmm. and out. Mm-hmm. Right? It's like, poof, yeah. it needs to get out, right? Yeah, yeah. And when anger is hitting like a little seedling hitting cement, mm -hmm. that's where we get frustration. Yeah. Where it's up against something. Yeah. So when we feel that little seedling, that's the time. If you can slow it down, then you have the power to choose. Okay, do I want to yell at this moment? Mm -hmm. Right? Is there somebody abusing a child in front of me? Do you know what I mean? Yeah, right. That's time to yell. Right, that's time to right? interrupt. Right. Right. Or this is, okay, there's my anger, and my partner just said something I didn't want to hear. Mm -hmm. So do I want to take a deep breath mm -hmm. and think about what I want to say mm -hmm. and feel my feet in the, on the floor in my bottom in my seat and mm -hmm. say, this is what I really feel about that mm -hmm. from a more controlled space. Yeah, and probably a more effective space. Right, because take effective action, right? So what's mm -hmm. effective? You may want to yell, but it's not going to get you where you're going to go. Yeah. Do you want to? Do you want to? Do you want to yell, or would you rather be heard? Okay, that's you know, it's very interesting. That's not a huge theme in our interviews, actually. Uh -huh. yeah. What you know, and and just do you? <laughs> it's like the thing that that is it sort of seems like instant gratification, right. yelling or doing something or effectiveness and actually creating what it is you really want right. and just how unconscious often that choice point is 
is hard to grab onto because yeah. it's often these habits are really uh, old. Like we practice them our whole yeah. life, our habits of dealing with this stuff. Well, and so, we've been taught them. How do you mean? I mean, this is what we're told that people can make us angry. Mm -hmm. That's a phrase we learn when we're in before preschool. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You mm -hmm. make me, that makes me upset. Mm -hmm. Our parents say that to us. Mm -hmm. You know, God bless our parents. They're trying their best. They mm -hmm. don't know. You know, I often think, what would I say? What do I say to a little kid when they do something that I don't want them to do that, quote, upsets me, right? Like, what is the appropriate thing to say? Mm -hmm. That upset, like, you can't, because the truth is, a three-year-old doesn't have the power to make me upset. I make myself upset. Mm right? Mm -hmm. I'm choosing upset. If mm -hmm. I go into upset, I'm choosing it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, that's an interesting paradigm for, you know, again, the political situation, right? You know, but right, right. Like right. the very real right. upsets that are happening. Right. Like how, how do you reconcile that? Like, right. How do I reconcile that? I don't know. Yeah. I, it's a tough one. I mean, it's like, how do I reconcile, you know, how do I personally reconcile this? Well, you this have this really deep belief that right. nobody can make you angry. Yeah. Right? And at the yeah. same time, there's a lot of stuff going on that I yeah. would imagine may be kind yeah. of triggering. Yeah. yeah, I get really heated about it. Yeah. <laughs> I <know you> do. <laughs> yeah, so, okay. Oh, you're going to bring me we can, bring me to task. So, like, Thich, yeah, Thich that's Thich what Nhat we're Han, doing. Right? Thich Nhat Hanh, right? Yeah. has this great... Bob used to tell a story about Thich Nhat Hanh, who... Uh, they he went to see him speak the night um, in DC the night they started bombing in Iraq. So this is the Bush administration. I lived in DC for the entire Bush administration, which now seems like cotton candy, right? So the so Thich Nhat Hanh some at some place in DC. I don't know what large venue, obviously. Hundreds and hundreds of people, maybe thousands. I don't know who was there, but a large venue. And he gets up on stage and he stands there the entire time and just says, I am the bomb. I am the bomber. I am Osama bin Laden. I am the refugee. I am the American soldier. I am the American citizen. I am the peasant, or I don't know if he used the word peasant, honestly, I can't, I don't want to attribute that, that to him. Um, but I am all of these, I, this is me. I am all For parts like, of this situation. The whole, entire time of the speech, all he did. <sighs> right. Mm -hmm. That, that kind of changes everything. Right. So I am Trump. It's oh, excuse so me. This is live. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I know you, I know we got residents out there, so no, it's per per perfect. Yeah, it's deep. Yeah, it's deep. Sitting with it. So I I've, am here. I am right now. I point at myself. So we do this thing where we go. I'm. You have to point at yourself. You go. I'm pointing at myself. Mm -hmm. I'm pointing at myself. Say it. I'm pointing, I'm pointing at, at myself. myself. I'm pointing at myself. Do you believe it? Do I believe? Keep what? saying that you're pointing at yourself till you really feel oh, it. Oh, okay. I'm pointing, pointing at myself. myself. I'm pointing, pointing at myself. Okay, yeah. I'm pointing okay, at now myself. point at me. I'm pointing at myself. I'm pointing at myself. Right? That's good. Yeah. So then I'm pointing, pointing at myself. myself. Point at, I'm pointing, pointing at, at myself. I'm pointing at myself. I'm pointing at myself. I'm pointing at myself. I'm pointing at myself. Yeah. Pointing at myself. I'm pointing at myself. That's deep. That's an incredible practice to do with someone who you have a squawk with. Okay. Who you have upset with. Yeah. So that you're acknowledging the humanity in both of you you know the little tiny bits of human like the not tiny bits but that you know we are all just humans struggling mm. you know yeah we are all just people and this is I think this is one of the cruxes of the invitations on the planet right now that so many of us are up against mm -hmm. right it's like that letting go of our my need Mm -hmm. To be right, my need mm -hmm. to be angry at you, at mm -hmm. you, at you, and mm -hmm. like to sh to see the shared divinity, mm -hmm. to see the shared experience, so that I'm not perpetuating more separation. Right. To practice oneness. To practice oneness in the deepest ways. Right. And I mean, I that's let's just say practice. Right. To practice. <laughs> right. And to acknowledge that oneness is real. I mean, if you look at us from far away, we are one. Mm. What do you mean? 
I mean, from the cosmos. Mm -hmm. This is just one little thing. We are all, all the same dust. There are, quantum physics proves that one molecule can be here and there. We can have the same molecules in us. Quantum physics has proven that. You guys see why? I mean, we have the best view. This is amazing. I totally, way to break that down. Well, that's, that's true. Bob Duggan, I will say. Yeah, yeah, but it's also from quantum physics. And, it's from and, quantum physics and the and the greater. Right, the cosmos. Know, yeah, the cosmos. <laughs> just facts. Just the cosmic intelligence just that it just is true. Yeah, yeah. Right, we're yeah. one. Right. Yeah, there's no right. separation. Right. And so then if you look at it that, and that's true for yin and yang, and that comes back to acupuncture, yin and yang is dark and light, up and down, um, hot and cold. Yin and yang, originally, it um, translates, yin is the shady side of the mountain, and yang is the sunny side of the mountain. Hmm. And just both are. And then oh, as the sun moves over the course of the day, that changes. Mm -hmm. Yin and yang, that symbol is spinning. Mm-hmm. It's a, it's a, it's not stagnant. It's a spinning symbol. Mm -hmm. So when we get to maximum yang, we get, we go to, to maximum, to, to yin. Mm -hmm. And we start to build until we get to maximum yin and then we get to minimum. And then ah, that might be too heady. But what I mean is, and the Tao Te Ching says, if you want something to die, you must first let it flourish. Right? Mm -hmm. And so we look at Trump and say, I don't want, I don't want, I don't want. But these are the particulars. So if we can step back and look at this from the from the larger space and say, this is we're just heading towards maximum of something and then we're gonna head to the next thing. Mm. Right. And it and it and then it is difficult in the particular and it's and that is not untrue. Mm -hmm. That is also true. Mm -hmm. That is also what we have to bear. Mm. Maybe talk a little, yeah. I kind of want to talk a little bit about like how to bear it, but then I also want to get back to, right? Like I want to make sure we just talk a little bit about the practice of acupuncture. So I feel okay. like, you know, <laughs> like there's so like... Yeah, I want to say one last thing which that is we all didn't of get this. to. Yeah, I just want to take it back to when I said right. you are going to observe that symptom. Mm -hmm. It is very important that there's no shame while observing that symptom what do you, like, and that so? and that oh this is the part that I missed is that if you miss it right that's okay too like you might be well on your way through anger well into anger mm -hmm. and be like oh Ann told me to observe and I missed it right I missed it all you know I didn't Full see on. it yeah that is very common yeah that's the way the world works that's the way the body works you're gonna get to Oh, I was just angry and then I was over anger and I yelled at everybody and I didn't observe to any, I didn't observe any of it. Yeah. That's, that's, that's going to happen. And then you go, I'm like, if you come back and you notice that you missed it, that's a start. Mm -hmm. Right. Just yeah. go, okay, I missed it. I'm going to watch for it again. Okay. Try to remember it. Yeah. And then watch for it again the next time and then watch for it again the next time. And that's how you practice. That's how you begin the practice of slowing it down mm -hmm. so that you can, so that when we see Trump and that's how we deal with it, right? Mm -hmm. So that, mm -hmm. I'm sorry, I'm using Trump as an example. I guess I'm not sorry. Um, so, <laughs> <laughs> what's that thing? Sorry, not sorry. Sorry, not sorry. sorry. Yeah. So sorry. Well, um, but, uh, but I, th I just want to say, I think it's really relevant because I think so many of us are, are grappling in our bodies, in our beings. Right. With, how to acclimate to this week, this right. inaugura inauguration right. week. So right. I'm not sorry because I think there's so many people out there that are looking for some new tools, right. some capacities, and I think this is so, right. so relevant. That's a good so point. That's a really thank good you point. for actually bringing yeah. it up. Okay, right on. Yeah, no, I think that's a really good point because I think a lot of us are in, like, fight or flight right now. Yeah, that's right. You know, stuck in this fight or flight, and, and I don't know that I have any, um, well, let's see. Um, there's, like... I think that in this, we, it's like, we have to recognize that I have to recognize that in my body. I feel it here. Mm -hmm. I feel it in my lower back, mm -hmm. <gasps> like a seizing. Oh, that's funny. My low back has been aching. It was aching yesterday. Yep. That's funny. I feel like a seizing in this abdomen area mm -hmm. where I'm like, oh my God, right. And so, Holding. right. So if we're going to make it through these next Four years, because even if they impeach him, Pence is just as bad for us. Pence mm -hmm. is just as bad. Uh, okay, so um, 
So then if we're going to make it through the next four years and not have adrenal overload. Okay. Right? Because yep. that's what's happening. Adrenal overload, meaning that hormones are dumping into your stress system. Yeah, and... we're in fight or flight, right? Yeah. So our adrenals are like, oh God, oh God, firing, firing, firing. Right. Firing. I'm afraid. I'm afraid. I'm afraid. Right. Right. I'm angry. I'm angry. I'm angry. Right. So then, or adrenal burnout, actually, not, I don't know if, what overload is, but burnout, right? We're going to have to be able to learn how to interrupt that cycle, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, so yes. it's just a matter of figuring out what does fight or flight mean to you? And then, what is, so what does it feel like in your body? What's the phenomena? Not, oh, I get really scared. That's a story. I... Scared feels different in you than it does in me. We can start me. there and you say, so then what does scared feel like in that's my body? Right. What right? does scared feel start like? Start right where you are. Right. But that's like, so that's, so I'm looking for what does it feel like? What's the phenomena in your body? Like when you were saying. Right. Contraction. Contraction. Yeah. Right. What's the actual, what's the description that you could give in this Which body? might be just be, like I can say powerless sometimes and that is like a lack of energy. So good. Right. So that's the difference because powerless to you means something different than it does to me. That's right. So then. Which, if you're just doing this on your own, then just use whatever works for you. Um, but so notice what it feels like in your body, and then can you slow that down and go, okay, I notice that I'm feeling scared right now, right? I notice that I have a tightness in the back of my, in the in my lower back right now. Can I take a, can I look around? Okay. That's the first thing I have people do, especially people with PTSD, is if you notice fight or flight, First, look around and assess the situation. Okay, so, and looking around gives me this opportunity maybe to get present for my eyes and my nervous system to see, okay, a tiger isn't about to eat me. Yes, it is it is an honest question. Am I safe right now? Am I safe right now? Right now, in this moment, in, in this, this situation. Moment, am I going, am I getting chased? Am I getting right. hit? Am I getting yelled at? Am I getting, what's going on? Am mm -hmm. I physically safe right now? Mm-hmm. Cause, okay. Right? Yep. Am I physically safe right now? Check in. Right. Okay? Yeah, we're sitting in this room. We have this existential threat. Yep. That is very real, right? That's right. But right now in this room, we are physically safe. So can we run from this threat? This threat that we're... No. Right. That we're feeling? Not... It doesn't seem like it. I can't run right now. Yeah. No. Well, I don't know where you really would go. I mean... Right. Or if you can, I mean, most people can't get right. away from this threat. Right. So, can we fight this threat right now? Sure, we can organize. Right. We are organizing. Right. So, can you do it right in this moment? Or are you going to do it later in the afternoon? Well, part of this We are kind of doing it right now. Is we're, <laughs> is we're talking about it. Yes. Yeah, totally. <laughs> right, okay. So, and, but, and if the answer is, no, I'm at work. Right. Or I'm holding my kid. Or right. I'm, you know driving the car or I'm cooking dinner, mm -hmm. right? Like yeah. I'm doing, right? If I can't, and sometimes, you know, the answer is I'm going to make a phone call to Susan Collins, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Can I do that right now? Mm -hmm. No, I can do that in 10 minutes. I can do that in an hour. I can do that at three o'clock. Okay. So I'm going to let it go until then. Okay. So how do you let it go? Right. So that's take a deep breath into the back ache. Which I'm just using I'm as my, do own my chest, example. right? Take a deep breath, everybody, into that area in your body that if you're feeling any sort of upset or contraction and you're in a safe place. Right. Check and make sure you're safe. That's the thing, especially for people with PTSD, is like, are you actually safe? Right. Because if we pretend that that's not a real question, then people won't feel safe when it's answered. Mm, totally. Right? Yeah. For sure. Oh, I just assume, well, obviously you're safe. No, ask the question. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes we're not safe. That's right. Right? For a variety of reasons. Right. Yep. So then, yes, we are physically safe. No, we have this existential threat, right? Mm -hmm. So what can we do in the moment? Take effective action or let it go. Can we call Susan Collins? And then even if you call Susan Collins, you're still going to feel scared, right? Yeah. So then are we going to live with this feeling of fight or flight all the time? Or are we going to work to let it go and take effective action when we can, right? Yeah, Cuz yeah. that's the thing we're going to have to learn how to do. Right. That we just have to learn how to do it. It's not going to it's not going to it's not easy. And the and part of the reason why I mean I don't think we have to learn how to do but but one of the compelling reasons to learn how to do it is because it it has a serious impact 
on our all of our systems, that's all right. of our health. That's right. If we're in chronic fight or flight. Yeah, that's absolutely, that's a really good point because it's not, we don't have to do it. Right. But am I going to choose to do it? Yeah. Am I going to choose, I once gonna... I slow it down and can observe it, then I have the choice to practice letting it go. Mm -hmm. Practice. Mm -hmm. Or to hold on to it because I'm attached to it mm -hmm. and it's serving me. Mm -hmm. But if it's not serving, then it's still a choice. You still get the choice, right? Do what you will. Mm -hmm. What are the consequences? The consequences are going to show up in your own body mm -hmm. and yeah. in your own life. And that's it. Mm -hmm. You know, so if, if, so oftentimes people come in for a sinus, for runny nose, chronic sinus infections, right? So the first thing I have them do is quit dairy for one week. Okay. One week. Dairy's great because it gets out of your system really quickly. So you can quit for one week and then have it again in a week mm -hmm. and see what happens. Mm -hmm. right? We just <laughs> talked about this actually with the naturopath with Aline Poppin. Um, nice. uh, Aline Poppin, she talked about the elimination diet and how it's such a great tool. Right. Right. To it's eliminate amazing. something, add it back, see what your sensitivity is. Right. And then you get the choice. Right. And then you get is the choice. Is it worth it or not? Right. Right. So for me, if I have too much dairy in my life all of the time, I will have a runny nose. So then, well, at least I had to quit it for like a year. Right. A lot of times people, so they'll quit it for the week and then they have it again. And then suddenly the nose is back and they're like, oh my God, I'm totally congested. I had no idea. Right. So the thing about dairy is that you don't have to necessarily, not everybody has to give it up forever. Like now I can have dairy. I have a little dairy actually every day. That's good because you like ice cream. I love ice cream, right? <laughs> I love it. And so, yeah. so you got to figure it out. Right. So you have to figure out, is the symptom worth it? Yeah. Right? And some days it probably just is. And some days it is. And there's nothing wrong with that. Mm -hmm. There's no guilt around that. There's no mm -hmm. shame around that. There's no, there's nothing wrong with that. Mm -hmm. The consequence is that I will have a runny nose and it ends there. Right. You know what I mean? Like, so, and so it doesn't mean I'm a bad person. It doesn't mean I don't have any willpower. It doesn't mean I'm, you know, like, a, 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 like just useless. It means I had some dairy and I got a runny nose. And then the next day happened, you right. know, like it's like that easy. So that's a really good point about this. It's like, we can, can we recognize this thing in our back, in our, can we recognize our own response to fight or flight? Mm -hmm. And then can we, can we practice interrupting it? Yeah. yeah. And then, or do we choose to practice to interrupt it? Yeah. And I is think, it serving or not? Absolutely. And I just want to say to that, I think it takes... You know, first of all, it takes a, a ch it takes choosing to explore, mm -hmm. you know, noticing what fight or flight is and how it shows up for me, and then also like exploring what actually does help me let it go. Because I gotta tell mm -hmm. you, most of the time, just wanting to let it go, um, it doesn't necessarily mean I can let it go. Yeah. I usually have to do something like take a walk or go to the gym yeah. or be still for 20 minutes, yeah. like very intentionally to state shift. Right. You that's know? really good. So yeah, it's that's like, a really good point. I think with every single body, it's like, what, what are the things having that list of 10 things that yeah. could contribute to a state shift out of fight or flight can be a really helpful tool. Yes. And take time to figure out. Yeah. And then, so Bob Duggan used to say, um, he would say, are you, are you attached to your upset? Yes. <laughs> I am usually attached to my upset. Okay. I just got to flip this thing up for some reason. It's up here. There we go. Does that show? No, and no. Then, okay. I am and attached then... to my upset. Half okay. the time, for sure. All right, let me ask you. Okay. Um, think about a particular upset. Okay. Is it serving you? No! <laughs> okay. <laughs> Can you let it go? I am working on it. Okay. <laughs> Work on taking that from me. No, you took it from me. Work on it. Oh, what do you mean work on it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you all got that? Work on it. Okay. <laughs> okay, so. Right, you just do it. Right, and then you're going to have it again. Do it again. And then. That feels good. You're going to have it again. Right. Do it again. Feels good just to take the coaster. So, like, what's the coaster in your life? Like, the upset in your life, right? Right. Just take it. Right. Just let it go. 
Right. For like one second. One you, second. It feels really go, good. Right? I can actually. Yes. It see? feels like so freeing. Beautiful. Yeah. So good. Yeah. So then, right. listen to me. It is going to come back. Right. That upset, I, I, 99%. Sometimes maybe you can let it go. You let it go forever. Mm -hmm. You can let stuff go for just three years. <laughs> <laughs> and then you go, damn, I'm still mad about that. Yeah. And then you got to practice letting it go again. Yeah. Most, in this case, you're going to be practicing. That's why I say practice. Mm -hmm. So you, it's going to come back in 10 seconds. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah, oh, for sure. So what I often do is... Have I have these little strings? Look at she's like pulling something out from underneath. I have a, I have a set of these friendship threads. Oh, that's sweet. <laughs> They're different colors. Yeah. I don't know if you guys can see. Yeah, they can see them. And um, I have somebody pick a color. Okay. I'll, I like this blue that's sticking out right here. Okay. And then we're gonna cut you a little thing. Uh huh. Piece of the thread All for right. your wrist. Okay. This seems a little corny. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you know, like I know. But I'm appreciating the the offering and the invitation. Okay, so what this? I don't is... mean corny disrespect. No, no, I know. I know too. Okay. I don't care. I like... I'm not a fan. <laughs> <laughs> right, is that good? Yes, yeah, right. Yeah. So then, what this is is a reminder. Uh huh. And so, because so this is like also so this is a trick I got from Bob and Diane. So this is, so then when you, because you're going to notice the, often we'll have somebody, or you can switch a watch. Mm -hmm. Nobody wears watches anymore. You can switch People a piece Fitbits. of jewelry. Oh yeah, you can switch your Fitbit, put on a string, and then when you notice it, because it's going to surprise you, when you notice it, then you check in your body. Am I feeling that upset right now? Oh, interesting. So and it's like then, a visual cue. Yeah, it's like a physical in. thing, yeah. yeah. And then you go, oh, am I feeling that? And then you practice letting it go. Okay, that's great. You just great. let it go like you took the coaster. Yeah. You just but practice like that a, again. Great. And then yeah. just going to have it on until it's on. Until Yeah, until, until, it, falls until it does, Yeah, until you don't like it anymore or it yeah. it's, stops it's reminding its you. Yeah, maybe yeah. it'll stop reminding you. You have to do something else. <laughs> totally. But so we could all put a little string for this fight or flight, am I right. in fear right now right. about That's a good Trump? Idea. Right. And then you know, because it's pretty constant, right? right? And then notice, and then when we notice the string, go, okay, I'm gonna let that sense of fear. I'm gonna take that breath and let that sense of fear drop. I'm just gonna let it go. Right. And do not be ashamed when it comes back. Mm -hmm. It will come back. Mm -hmm. It comes back. Powerful, of course. Right. And then it, that's the practice. And then, and the more you practice it, the less it comes back. Right. So of course. it's like yeah, because you're you're sort of creating those grooves in your brain and in your body. Right. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. One hundred percent. You're creating a new pathway. That's exactly. It's like. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Great. Yeah. We actually only have like five ten minutes left. Well, we're, we're, we talk a lot. Yeah. We, no. There's just so much to talk about. So, a couple of other questions. Um, there was this one question that you really liked, and I want oh, yeah. to make what sure. What was my question? Uh, oh yeah, sometimes healing. We kind of have talked about this. Sometimes How healing, healing can be uncomfortable. Right. Um, you know, what do you have to say to people about that? But I also really want you to answer the question of, for people out there who don't know a lot about acupuncture, like what would you like people to know about it? Because we didn't get into like a ton of the. We got into a lot. Actually, this right. was so much about your work, right? And about the actual right. acupuncture. acupuncture itself. Um, if there's anything that you'd like people to know about, like, what's one thing people don't often know about your modality, but is kind of good for them to know? Well, let's see. Um, acupuncture can be used for a huge variety of things, um, ranging from you know, back pain, headache, to um, PTSD, anxiety, to foul issues, to sinus infections, to um, uh, the, the World Health Organization has like over a hundred, a list of over a hundred things that it's been um, clinically trialed, proven to be effective on. Um, so it's really very broad ranging. It's a, a more about treating the whole body, right? We don't see a knee walking around with the, without a person attached, so we don't just treat knee pain, we treat people. Mm. And that's true for all acupuncturists. Mm. Um, there are a lot of 
different modalities. The other thing I would say, finding an acupuncturist is kind of like finding a therapist. Like you want to find one that matches with you. Mm -hmm. If you go once and you say, oh, it didn't work for me, like hmm. go to somebody else or go. The other thing is that the way I like to describe it is that it's um, like it's like an eruption at the bottom of the ocean. Like it's very, it's profoundly subtle. <laughs> So there can be like you can with the <laughs> That's cool. with the with the you can with the initial treatment have like totally off the hook like oh my god I had a past life experience I've had somebody have a past life experience right like you can with the first treatment have this have a really intense experience mm -hmm. um, of relief too right is that what you're talking relief, about you can have symptoms be relieved in the first treatment yeah. you can have and you might not it mm -hmm. might take five treatments because it's it's the same as like creating those little pathways mm -hmm. so you want in the brain I did that on this side does that make sense so you want um to be able to create so it's like it's so subtle in this way that when we you know put the needles in and you create change the pathway and then you go on with the rest of your life for the next week and you come back we've got to we've got to put that pathway in again. We've got to put that pathway in again. So if you go once, you think it doesn't work. If you liked your acupuncturist, I would say go probably four times before and then talk to them. It's four to six. I usually have people come. And see how you see how you're doing. Yeah. Talk I to like, your body. See if it's, it feels like there's like a shift starting to happen. Yeah. And there's usually a shift, you know, there's some form of shift with the first treatment, but it might not be like, Oh, my headache went away. Mm -hmm. Like I felt better in this different way, or something mm -hmm. like that. Yeah. Um. So you don't have to believe it to do it. Okay. Um. It works on dogs and babies. Wow. Right. So you don't have to, like, have a belief that it's going to work. You just you. It is helpful if you're open to healing, which that goes back to that question about how healing is uncomfortable. Um. You know, because, like, dogs and babies are really ready to heal. <laughs> they're really open. You know, they're really ready to be. They don't have a belief system that is maybe doubting. Right. They're, they don't have something else that's putting it back into place. Hmm. Um, but whatever. It works on people who... I had a client once who said to me, after coming to me for a long time, it, 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 he came for me, to me for hip pain. And he said to me, do I believe in acupuncture? No. Do I feel better? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. <laughs> <It's> great. Yeah. <laughs> That's so, cool. Yeah. So yeah. It's, like, it's kind of cool that it could be it can be those existing at the same time. Right. right yeah. Right. So there's that, and then is there anything else I would want to say? That's great about acupuncture. It's magical. It still sometimes surprises me. Hmm. I recommend it. It's a beautiful modality. Hmm. It's really opening. Hmm. Can help. It can create openings in a lot of different ways that's beautiful and just to say there's ways to see an acupuncturist one-on-one -on -one. and there's also like in Portland here I know we have a handful yeah. of clinics yeah. that you can go in um, for folks who don't have as, their insurance doesn't cover it or you don't have right. as many resources right. you can go in and do community acupuncture which yeah. is in a group setting that's right. it's a lot uh, it's a lot um, ch uh, cheaper not cheaper that's a dumb word it's a lot it's less, less expensive less expensive yeah. Yeah. and um, can be just as effective that's right. It's well, and it's a different modality. So yep. we have Ryan Nitz up here in the main center for acupuncture. I think that's who it is. And then, I mean, I think that's, I always mix up the acupuncture center. It's center for acupuncture. And then Sasha Rose and Wildwood. people over on Wildwood yep. on India Street are really great. I love them all. They're really mm -hmm. good. And they do, I don't know what, the, you know, sliding scale is usually between 20 and 40 or 50. Yeah. Maybe 25 to 50 at Wildwood. I don't know. Um, and... Now it's a little different, so I would do full body treatment. Mm -hmm. So I, with me, you get on one on one. We have this big conversation, or we have a small conversation depending on who you are and what you need. And then we go to the table, and then you have you could get full body acupuncture with the um, with the community stuff. You'd go and you sit in a community space, and you have like a lounge chair and then they treat usually mostly distal points though I've actually seen um I think somebody had belly 
points up at Ryan's place, and I've been there, and they're really good. You recommend yeah. it? Yeah, I recommend both places. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Well, and also just the practice of community acupuncture. Yeah, accessibility I, I really, wise. Yeah, and... absolutely. I think it's a great model. Yeah, that. cool. It's not my. <clears throat> I really like the one on one. Yeah, of I course. I really like the yeah, yeah. conversation yeah. personally. No, of course, um, that's your practice. But yeah. just to let people know there's a variety of yeah. ways, given your yeah. resources or your style. Yeah. You know, because part of this is just helping to ed people educate about acupuncture. Well, yeah, absolutely. You know? No, absolutely. I think they're both. Yeah, it's a definitely a, a great modality. A great. I'm really glad to see acupuncture more accessible in that way. Yeah, and being yeah, covered by insurance a lot important. more, too. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Um, we got to start wrapping up. Um, I feel like we, you and I could sit here and talk and I know, that's for, true. We uh, talk forever. quite a while, but I know it's been about an hour. So, um, you guys, thank you for joining us. Um, Ann Helfrich Acupuncture, St. John Street Building. Yeah. Um, Should I go website on? is? AhaMaine.com. So A-H-A, Ann Helfrich Acupuncture, Main, M-A-I-N-E, <laughs> dot com. Yeah. So you can get, you can contact me there. There's email or phone number on there. Yeah. So. Highly recommend. I've had a lot of friends and colleagues go to Anne. Highly recommend uh, Anne's work. And we have so many great acupuncturists in this town. Yeah, and, there's really um, amazing. And really people. on the planet right now. So yeah. it's an exciting time to explore that type yeah. of healing. Yeah. Um, so much more we can say, but I think we should wrap up. Um, any last word you want to offer to... Well, thanks for being here and joining, and I hope that it we've served, and uh, thanks for joining us. Yeah. Yeah, and thanks for, I just want to say thanks for talking about some of the stress people are, work, fight, flight, people are working with this week. Yeah. I think I'm really glad we talked about that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Hive Live will be back tomorrow with me and Shannon um, Mackie Fisher. We're going to be talking about deep choice. Um, we're going to talk about the intersection of abor abortion care, parenting, stress pleasure sex Woo! like anything goes right. we're gonna see what we talk about before we say goodbye we're gonna give you a little shot of oh, of sadie the healing dog oh, the um sadie come here wanna say hi there's this is the this hi, is sadie <laughs> look at her <laughs> <laughs> all right, you guys. Thanks so much. Have a great. Look at all the the, the likes. It's so sweet. Oh, thanks yeah, to Anne. Yeah,